Okay. <clears throat> now, this is two questions for Dr. Miller. Um, is there any evidence or chance that the spike in autism is due to poor or weak sperm? And what about ultrasounds? Could they be having an effect on developing a neonate? The, the health effects of ultrasound generally are poorly documented compared to the health effects of uh, sound that we can hear. So I think that uh, this is a very nascent uh, science, and I don't think we have a good idea of what is happening there. All right. Um, do you, uh, let me ask this to anyone on the panel that wants to answer it. Are Blue Shield products legit? Do cars offer any protection when you're driving by cell towers? Do organites offer any protection? There's several questions about are there shields that work? Um, and uh, what recommendations does anyone want to make about products to shield you for the phone? Frank? So, you know, as we've been saying all along, the, the best advice is to, is to keep it away from your body and minimize the use as much as you can. So um, I want to respond to the question about the, uh, what should be the uh, radiation level that we should regulate. And I think that um, all the studies, that, a lot of the studies that were done actually by the U.S. government, including the APA, showed that the problem is not only the radiation levels. And actually the NTP study also showed that uh, sometimes um, lower levels of radiation can be more harmful than higher levels of radiation. So regulating the health effects and safety standard cannot only refer to the levels of radiation. Actually, the levels of radiation is a very, very small part of the story. The studies show that the modulation of those signals is the main issue. And there are cer certain frequencies that are more bioactive than others. So ignoring those questions would not give us safe, proper safety standards. And actually, in 1995, when um, uh, the EPA was about to regulate the health effect, and they, um, they proposed two uh, levels regulation, first to regulate against the thermal effect, and then non-thermal, modulated, and pulsed microwave frequencies. So I think regulating this topic will be much more complicated, and it will require from us to stop this uncontrolled race on wireless technology. And we'll, we will need to find safer solutions rather than spending years trying to regulate this. Um, I also think that the FDA clearly proved uh, the FCC are not necessarily the right agencies to regulate this, con considering the actions in the past 22 years. And we'll have to get involved other health agencies in the process and probably also independent scientists to make sure that uh, money interest is not going to be involved in that process. If you want to measure the level of exposure you get from your cell phone, you can use your cell phone. You can download an application called CellRaid that measures both your exposure from your phone and your exposure from the environment. It does this by assessing the distance between your phone and your head, as well as monitoring continuously the exposure that you get from cell towers around you. So you can uh, download that. It's a free application. Cell Raid, C E L L R A I D. But there's also Talk On. Have you evaluated that? T A W K O N. Uh, and there's many other applications from the uh, the East. Uh, they more or less all do the same thing. Um, <coughs> the point is that, um, as a matter of fact, Steve Jobs specifically prohibited putting them into the iPhone. He was given the opportunity to do that. And the, and the phone manufacturers have walked away from giving you information because it is available because the phones themselves use it. So I think it's, it's rather important to know that there are some ways you can do this. But that leads to this other question. Um, are there um, ways to reduce exposure to cell phone radiation with uh, engineering precautions and user pr cooperation without substantially affecting the function of the system? And uh, Paul, I don't know if you want to comment on whether there are ways to design um, safer devices. As my colleague Frank Clegg has pointed out, there's lots that can be done. If you take a typical uh, unaware user of a cell phone, you re-engineer the cell phone, you make changes in software, you should be able to get a hundredfold reduction in those delivered. A hundredfold. Wow. Okay. Okay, uh, next question. How does radio frequency affect the gut biome? Paul, this may be for you as well. And how does your studies, were they done on cells that were already cancerous? And you mentioned, quote, clear drastic effect on cancer cells. 
Uh, what about normal cells? Cancer cells and normal cells share completely certain mechanisms that, by the way, are also shared by, by uh, trees and by every other living uh, being on the planet. <laughs> so essentially, my uh, analysis uh, 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 targeted uh, enzymes that are very, very general in nature. So essentially, uh, these cancer cells uh, reacted, normal cells would react exactly the same way. They would not lose chromosomes, but they would have the same imped impediment in their metabolism. It, what interesting. Was, what was the other one? And what about the, uh, the uh, uh, effect on the gut? Yeah. yeah, there are anecdotal reports that uh, you can get sick from uh, cell phone radiation changing uh, the behavior of bacteria in your gut but there hasn't been any large study that I know of on this subject. Is anyone familiar with the studies on acceleration of bacterial growth from 5G? No. Okay. Um, I, I, I want to point out, by the way, that on this panel we have four people who have signed the 5G letter, the 240 scientists who are calling for it, <laughs> calling for the moratorium that, that both Dafna and Theodora, you know, have mentioned, and um, I think we are all, we, we need, we all need to support one another um, in this effort. Okay, um, what is the relationship <laughs> between 5G and DARPA? <laughs> okay. <laughs> nope. Okay, um, well I can answer partly that uh, Paul um, Ben Ishai from Israel and Yuri Feldman tried to get funding from DARPA for their early work in 2009 when they showed that 5G, which we now call 5G, they were just, just millimeter wave, clearly could resonate with the sweat duck of the human skin. They actually tried to get money and failed to get money from DARPA, not surprisingly, because DARPA is relying on 5G to make weapons that are being used now for crowd control, and you can get information on that on the web, including on our website as well. Um, Can I make a comment? Sure. It's really important to um, to make the distinction. 5G is not about millimeter waves. Millimeter waves is only one of the ways in which the infrastructure for 5G is going to be implemented. So it's only uh, a part of the whole 5G. 5G is a concept, an infrastructure for the Internet of Things, which include lower frequencies, higher frequencies, including millimeter waves. Right, and as a matter of fact, the things that are called 5G are going to be able to give you 4G and 3G, because right. right now there is no 5G. It, right. So this question here, my router has 5G. Should it be turned off or replaced? All right, so can I So you want to go? Okay, so 5G in your router, it's not 5G. 5G mm -hmm. is five, fifth generation. 5G in your router means 5 gigahertz, a frequency used for the Wi-Fi. They just added another frequency, another bandwidth on your Wi-Fi router, so it's different. And yes, if you can, just go online and buy a different router that does not include it. Um, you do not need that extra frequency. You don't need Wi-Fi at all, but if you want Wi-Fi, you better have uh, uh, less intense Wi-Fi routers that have less frequencies rather than more frequencies. Okay, uh, Dr. Melnick, Ron. Yeah, I just want to make another comment about 5G is that when Brendan Carr says, of the FCC, says it's safe, we should ask, where is the evidence? And if 5G is primarily affecting the skin, we should be aware that the skin is the largest organ in the human body, and that what we also would like to see, what is the evidence whether 5G is affecting the uh, incidence of melanoma in the human population, because 5G is not going to be the only exposure to the skin, UV light, which causes melanoma in conjunction with 5G, will that increase the risk? Uh, I think that's a question for Brendan Carr. Uh, yes, as a matter of fact, uh, we are all sending a letter asking that question um, soon because the, of the assertion of safety when there are no data on safety. 